Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Uh, in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about Pro Tools' uh, latest release, uh, 2023.6. All of those numbers. Um, it's It's been released in June. That's what the point six means, isn't it? That's right. Totally. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Teachable moments. Um, and so 2023.6 brought us a whole load of extra really cool stuff. Um, track markers is is what we're going to be talking about exclusively today. Uh, the new version also brings us new track widths, um, some uh, some user experience improvements for event operations, some very cool stuff in there. Uh, device setup uh, dialogue upon first launch, which is cool. Um, some surround monitoring stuff for carbon um, and a couple of other things as well. But it's going to be all about track markers today. Right, Andy? That's right. And and there's a lot of parts to it. So it's it's one feature, but it's got a lot of, of interesting parts that you can customize and make whatever you want. And Anders is going to love this. There are shortcuts. Love it. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay. So when we talk about this new track markers functionality... It's one feature, but it's a feature that has a lot of facets to it. So let's take them one at a time. The first one is going to be this idea of having a target track. So I've got a session here. And the first thing that I want to show you is to the right of the IO column, the track uh, edit window view, you'll see here a new set of controls. And at the very top in the markers ruler, you'll see this button that if I click on it, it turns red. Well, you guys have all seen this kind of a button before, haven't you? You see these on plug-in windows. You've seen these in other places. It is a target button. The target button will allow you to control where you're going to create a marker. So right now, if I was to create a marker using this target button, it would create a marker in the marker ruler like we've done prior to this. You know, all the markers used to be in the marker ruler, but now they don't have to be. So now what you can do is you can target any track that you want, and that's going to be the track that Pro Tools is going to assume is where you want to create the new marker. Uh, by the way, if you don't have this visible on your setup, just go to the edit view selector and then make sure that you have markers as a view selected, right? Very good. There's two places we can do this. Go into edit window views, you'll see marker controls. And I'm going to hide it by clicking here and the checkbox goes and it's gone now, right? The other way you could do it is if you click on the edit window view selector, pop it and you go to marker controls and it comes right back. How did you move that target for the marker? Did that move automatically when you selected the track or did you do that by, by a shortcut? I did it manually, but there's a couple of shortcuts. Thank you for teeing this up. You can have Pro Tools work in a lot of different ways. One of those ways is a preference. So let's go to your preferences real quick. And it's in the editing tab, in memory locations, marker target, which is this brand new thing, follows the first selected track. And I believe by default, this is enabled. It is. So now if I go with that preference enabled, now if I was to click on the first track, the target button moves and you can see here any track name that I click. That's one way to move your target. Here's another way. The shift key and the left and right brackets are gonna move that cursor up and down without changing the selected track. It's worth noting. So you can change your target there and you can go up to the marker ruler. So that's targeting. Once you have whatever you want to have targeted, the next thing you're going to do is create a memory location or a marker. And you can do that during playback. You can do it when you're stopped. And the shortcut to do that is still the enter key. Boom. The numeric keypad. On the numeric keypad, yes. At this point, some of the window looks exactly the same. If I go up here to my name, I'm going to name this um, mem on main ruler. Okay, so this is a memory location on the main ruler. And you'll see here, I've got markers, selections, I've got none. Notice something interesting happened. As soon as I changed from a marker, my ability to put something on a track went away. This makes sense because it's track markers, isn't it? And it, it's a visual thing. Yeah, it's not a memory location, right? It's a marker. It's a marker memory location. Exactly. And just to be clear here, this is also a sort of confusion when teaching these in courses. People confuse the, the subject memory location and marker and think 
that they are the same thing, but it's actually a memory location can be a marker, which is visible in a ruler, but it can also be a selection or, or nothing and just contain other data. But in that case, it's not a marker anymore. That's right. All markers are memory locations. Not all memory locations are markers. But if you want it to be on a track, it has to be a marker. And let me just put in some text here, just because text now takes on a better role. By the way, while Andy's typing here, uh, looking at the colors here that you can now choose different colors, look at how nice they did this with shortcuts, very explanatory, so that you can choose colors using shortcuts here. Right, so I'm holding down option now and the numbers in the numeric keypad or the numbers in the QWERTY part of your keyboard. And you can choose the first bunch of colors here. And if you want to get to the other bank of colors, you hold down command on a Mac computer, you hold control on a Windows machine. So I've created this memory location, which is on the ruler. So pretty basic stuff. There we go. Dave, where do you want me to create a track based marker? On which track? On the effects stem, please. On the effects stem. Okay. So I'm going to click here and my target moves over. And I'm just gonna click to another place here, hit enter. I'm gonna call this FX hit. And you have the choice of being in the main ruler or you can go to the track. And you can see here, if I go to the track, it's gonna go here. Uh, what color do you want it to be, Dave? Uh, blue, please. Blue, okay. Okay, so now we have this little marker right down here. Ask me questions. So I have one. The track markers is kind of assuming that you know what track you want to put a marker on. If you don't want to have to deal with targets, there's actually kind of a neat little workaround and it's right there in the controls. If I wanted to put a marker, let's say right here, I could just click the plus button. It opens up the new memory location window and it focuses on the track. It assumes that's the track you want to have it on. Okay, so now I've got a brand new marker right there. So there's a lot of different ways that we can deal with that. Now, there's a couple other shortcuts. You'll see here, we've got this little lane. If you want to show and hide this, because you know if you've got a lot of these, it could take up a little bit of real estate. Shift U will show and hide the gutters. For all tracks. For all the tracks, yep. Andy, can I ask a question here? I was a bit surprised because when you've selected a track as a target and you hit the enter key, it defaults to creating that as a marker in the markers ruler and not on the targeted track. Is there a way to like instantly get that or is there a shortcut to change so that it follows the target? Do you understand what I mean? There is. Do you know the answer to this question? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Command enter. There we go. Ooh, nice. Okay. Command enter, that's fantastic. You were testing me on that one. I was like, I know there's a shortcut. I hope this is it. Yeah. So command and enter on the numeric keypad, just like normal on a Windows machine's control and enter. That will open up the window. The radio button will be clicked here. So there's a lot of ways you can go with whatever workflow you want, right? So if you don't even want to deal with the targets, I just click the plus button. It's no problem at all. Can you promote a regular marker that appears on the markers bar to a track? Let's say you've got an old session and all the markers are up in the ruler. Well, what I could do is I could command click on the marker and basically this allows you to modify the marker. You have the choice between main marker or your targeted track. The targeted track. So the, the, there isn't a drop down there, for example, on the track bit that allows you to select other tracks in the session. It's always the main ruler, at least at this point with the, with the initial rollout of the feature, it's always gonna be the main ruler or a track. But there's potentially an easier way to do it, and that's just to click and drag on the marker. You can drag left and right, as you always could in the past, but you could also drag up and down. You can drag a marker from one track to another or from one track to the ruler. Now, for me, I might not use this all the time because you are always running the risk of accidentally changing the timing of a marker, but it is certainly one way you could work. There's a couple other things I want to show you. I made it a point of putting comments in my markers, and there's a reason for that. The role in the convenience that comes with comments becomes really, really huge. And what I can do is if I wanted to see the comments on one track, right underneath the target button is a little kind of looks like a text bubble, right? I'll go ahead and click this, and you'll see instead of the name, you'll see what the comments are. I think this is going to be huge for things like lyrics and stuff. If you want to, there's a shortcut that will change it as well. And that's shift N and shift N will make that change for all selected tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fantastic one. Is it a latch? 
or uh, does it latch on or is it touch based it latches so if i do, if i do this it's a toggle yeah it toggles it's either going to show you your comments or the name unless you go one step further into the markers track view if i go here to this track you'll see right above waveform is markers and that's a different view you'll see here i've got the name of the marker and then i also have the comments together that's great does that make sense i love it by the way when you're speaking here of the comments being more important that takes on a whole new dimension if you look at the memory locations window that looks amazing and that you can resize it and that the markers and comments are clearly visible there that's right uh, can you show that so you can see here's your marker name here's the track that it's on um, all of these are on tracks. If it was on a ruler, it would let you know that as well. And of course, you've got the comments, which you could always see before if you wanted to, mm. right? We did have this view before. It just didn't have the same kind of importance and ramifications that I think it does now with this new feature. One thing that I missed when I was creating a marker is the reference. Now, absolute mm -hmm. means that it's sample-based, which means it won't change its position based upon tempo changes. Bar and beat means that it will move around based upon tempo changes. This one is absolutely brilliant. So if you're putting this on a track, then it will follow whatever your track time-based is at the time. So if I go ahead and pop this, you'll see I've created a new marker over here and that marker is a diamond. That diamond shape tells me that it is a sample-based absolute track marker and it won't move if I change my session's tempo. But if I went and changed the track's time base to ticks, you can see that icon just changed to a baseball diamond, which means that it's a tick-based marker. So you have the ability to explicitly say it's absolute. You can explicitly say it's relative bars and beats, or you can just do what I just did. And that's the default, is that it follows the track's time based. Whatever you change your track, that's what your markers are going to be. Fantastic. So who do you think will benefit from all of these uh, new uh, new markers? And uh, it's like, what, w how can we use it? Yeah. It's one of those things. It's like elastic audio. Everyone's going to use it for a lot of different things. Mm. And there's one other thing I just wanted to talk about before I forget. If I move this over, you can see that Trash Me didn't move along with, with that change. And there's a button right up here, right next to Automation Follows Edit, and that is Markers Follow Edit. And now what happens is if I move this, that marker goes with. So you have the ability to either have the markers ignore any selections you're making on the timeline or be included in that. One final thing, I made a mistake, Dave. I wanted this trash me to be at the very beginning of the clip. I'm sure you know exactly how you would do that. It's the same thing as aligning anything else. I'm gonna hold the control key, pop that, and it moves it to the beginning of the selected area. Just like if you were conforming clips or MIDI notes. Now, I believe this is going to work. I think control command is going to move that to the back. Yeah. So aligning to the start and to the end of a selected area works just as if you were aligning clips. Yeah. Uh, by the way, a couple of other uses that we haven't really discussed since now, these are track markers. And Media Composer has been using track markers for years and years, right? And we've been able to kind of import something from Media Composer when it comes to to, to markers, but now it's much easier to interchange notes and marker locations with Media Composer, of course. You know, over the last few versions of Media Composer and Pro Tools, the workflow between Media Composer and Pro Tools has gotten quietly but steadily easier. Yeah. The fact that you can go to Media Composer and save your sequence as a Pro Tools session is huge, gigantic. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 One other thing I did want to mention is you have the ability to, for example, let's say if I wanted all of these markers to be recolored, if you go here into your color palette and you'll see here that you've got the ability to change selected markers as well. So guys, that's, I think, a fairly comprehensive first look at what's going to be a powerful new feature. The ramifications for it and the, the, the potential for a, a more um, <clears throat> advanced ways of using it. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Really well thought through. No, I think, I, I think that, you know, it's going to be like, you know, folder tracks. It's that, you know, we, we roll it out and I think, you know, people are going to use it in 
hundreds of different ways, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, just speaking from, from my own experience as I was working with this version in beta, um, I immediately started applying it. I mean, it, it just, it was like the easiest thing in the world to, to put, you know, markers where you wanted on the tracks that you wanted, mm -hmm. you know, because what we've done in the past, obviously, is you've got your different markers. And if you're marking a specific thing on a track, you have to kind of remember wh what track it was on. Mm -hmm. Now you don't. Now, it, now it's going to mm -hmm. occupy the track. And, and with the comments, you know, you can quickly see what the notes are. I think with interoperability, you know, sharing sessions and being able to to make comments on a track by track basis is going to be gigantic, gigantic. Yeah, just imagine uh, doing something with uh, a Pro Tools collaboration thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where you actually can type directly into uh, the, the session. And this, of course, will be, or the session I said, in the project, to be correctly, with terminology here, right? That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think I'm very, very excited to, to see what people do with this mm -hmm. and where, where the workflows evolve. You know, obviously there's, there's a couple of obvious workflows where this is going to be popular, but I think there's going to be a lot of places where people would do some really interesting and unexpected mm -hmm. things with them. Um, if you got a lot out of this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, give, us a, uh, give us a sub and then hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload our latest episodes. Uh, if you fancy heading over to ProToolsAnswers.com, you can find out a little bit more about us over there. You can also subscribe to our own Inner Circle as well, uh, where we've got some benefits, including monthly masterclasses with one, two, or maybe all of us, um, and access to our closed Discord community as well. And um, all he's going to say is uh, thank you very much to Anders. Thank you. Thank you very much to Andy. You bet. My name's Dave, this is Pro Tools Answers. We'll see you guys next time, and we're out. <laughs>